Before I played Celeste, I had very little taste for difficulty in video games. The way that I saw it, a high level of difficulty basically just means that you're going to end up failing a lot, and failure is not fun. So I couldn't really understand why I ought to take the trouble to deal with a truly difficult game. After all, the whole point of a game, as far as I could tell, is to create a sphere of activity for you, the player, in which your efforts actually pay off in a satisfying way. Whereas difficult games frustrate your actions on purpose. And that kind of seems to contradict the point of an experience designed to make your actions pay off. So why would I even play a difficult game in the first place? But don't worry, that last question was rhetorical. I've come around and I don't really have that attitude anymore. I'm no pro or anything, but I do now like a game that kicks my ass once in a while. And the reason has a lot to do with a breakthrough that I had while playing Celeste. And in this video, I want to tell you a little bit about how Celeste managed to break through that wall that prevented me from understanding what a little bit of difficulty can bring to the table. One of the defining qualities of Celeste is that it is an exactingly difficult game, at the same time as it's also a minimally punishing game. In fact, I'd even call it surprisingly forgiving. And if that sounds like a little bit of a paradox to you, if it's a little bit hard to picture what that might mean, it might be worth distinguishing the distinct functions of difficulty and punishment. Because they're really two different things, even though they often go really closely together in the world of video game design. Let's start by considering the idea of difficulty. What is it? Well, one way to measure the difficulty of a game is to count the rate at which you fail or achieve some kind of significant fail state. A game is difficult if you fail a lot, typically by dying, maybe by taking hits, or maybe you can't complete a mission, whatever the fail state is. And a game is easy if the failure rate is negligible, if you basically are always able to accomplish the objectives that you set for yourself. But now distinguish the rate at which you fail in a game, which is the measure of difficulty, from the punishment that you get every time you fail. A game can punish you for failure in all sorts of different ways. Maybe when you die, you have to restart the level. Maybe when you die, you lose your inventory or experience or in-game currency. You might get a game over and so on and so forth. These are all punishments that are designed to more or less make you feel bad for failing or at the very least to communicate the severity of your failure. The game lets you know that you messed up by taking stuff away from you that you want and that make you happy. The way that a game goes about attaching punishment to your failures plays a pretty big role in determining what it feels like to fail and how a game's difficulty feels more generally. For example, I think that Celeste is a lot more difficult than Super Mario World on the Super Nintendo, in the sense that I die in Celeste far more frequently than I die in Super Mario World. But Super Mario World ends up being a somewhat more brutal experience for me, who's not amazing at 2D platformers, because of the way that it punishes my failures. In Super Mario World, you have a fixed number of lives. You start with five. And when they run out, it's game over. You have to start over from the very beginning. And I'm not going to lie, the reason I know this is because it's happened to me multiple times. And it doesn't feel great. But Celeste, on the other hand, is a game where you're pretty frequently going to run into platforming challenges that are going to make you die 20 times in a minute easy just trying to scrape by. But there's also almost no punishment to speak of for all that failure, so you're never really going to feel the force of it in a negative way. You see, Celeste breaks its gameplay down into screen-sized platforming challenge rooms that probably take 10 or 20 seconds tops to clear. And every time you die, you instantaneously respawn at the beginning of the screen-sized room. You don't have to restart the level, you don't lose any items, there's no game over, you just pop back up a few feet from the place where you died, and it probably takes an average of two to five seconds to regain your progress, it's nothing. So dying doesn't really have any negative consequences. And in a game where death has no consequence, dying doesn't really end up feeling like failure either, even though, strictly speaking, that's exactly what it is. So Celeste ends up playing a little trick on you. It makes you fail at a higher rate than most games you'll ever play, thanks to extreme levels of difficulty that attach to its platforming challenges. But it also conceals this very fact from you. So you might not even notice how difficult it really is, because it refuses to punish you for your failure. It refuses to communicate to you that you messed up. And the upshot of all this is that you could die 20 times in a row before clearing a particularly difficult room. 
But the impression that this makes on you is not that you failed 20 times and succeeded one time. It feels more like you just underwent a single protracted process of experimentation. The reason is that the game just allows you to investigate what works and what doesn't through trial and error without worrying about the price of failure. So all of your failures, all of your errors, just end up getting integrated into a narrative of constant progression as you gain more knowledge and experience with the problem that you're trying to solve. And if you want to get an idea of how unique this is in a video game, just consider how you would never get this feeling of progression if you died 20 times in a row in a game like Super Mario World. Because every time you die, you just lose progress. The game totally breaks your flow, sends you back to the beginning of the level, or anyways, it's just gonna give you a game over before you even have a chance to die 20 times. And it'll just end up making you feel dejected, like the game's just a bit too hard for you, and you'll probably quit. But Celeste will make you die far more often than you ever will in Super Mario World, while at the same time nurturing you far more than you'll ever get nurtured in Super Mario World. Because there just really isn't a way to lose progress when you die, so you're always on a track of upward progression. So for all these reasons, I regard Celeste sort of like an introduction to difficult games. It's like baby's first difficult game. It gives you difficulty without punishment, which is perfect for players who want a taste of what it's like to be a hardcore gamer, but also have a pretty low tolerance for the trials of frustration that you need to endure in order to get there. And that happens to be the kind of gamer that I am, so it really worked for me. I mentioned at the beginning of this video that Celeste was kind of a breakthrough for me in my life as a gamer. It warmed me up to the idea that difficult games might actually be worth the trouble sometimes and even fun to play. To be a bit more precise, Celeste was actually the pivot point that finally got me into From Software's catalog of Soulsborne games, which, as everybody knows, are kind of like the gold standard for difficult gameplay experiences. I essentially jumped from Celeste to Dark Souls, which is now my favorite game of all time, but which I had played once before and just didn't really connect to it. It's a little bit difficult to articulate exactly what change Celeste produced in me that prepared me for a FromSoft game. But I think what I essentially got was a kind of assurance that the struggle to persevere in the face of frequent failure can actually be worth it. Because once you get good, the dividends start flowing pretty freely. The thing is, if you've never really gotten good at a game, you just don't have any way of knowing how satisfying it is to kind of just rock really hard at it. And you're never going to get to that point until you actually let a game push you to your limit. And I had never got there either until I played Celeste and allowed its special brand of nurturing difficulty almost to trick me into rising to its challenges and getting kind of good for once in my life. And look at me now. I'm now the kind of guy who will tell you that Dark Souls is actually a pretty easy game once you get the hang of it. But anyways, that is all I have to say about Celeste for now. I would be really interested to hear from you in the comments about your own experience with difficult games. Are there any games that taught you the value of a good challenge the way that Celeste taught me? And for the Celeste enjoyers out there, was your experience with the game anything like mine? Let me know. I'd love to hear from you. My name's Chumpy. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.